All right, welcome back to our examples. The example that we're going to be tackling in this video is the first example in section 3.4 on determining the validity of an argument in categorical logic using a Venn diagram. Um, so this is an example of the Venn diagram test for validity. Now the first example here we're going to tackle, tackle is the following argument. So this argument is as follows. Some mammals are amphibious, therefore some amphibious things are mammals. So notice first and foremost really quickly that this is our conclusion. And this is our premise. And so the really important thing to remember when it comes to the Venn diagram test for validity is that what we're looking to do is to construct a Venn diagram for our premise and compare the Venn diagram for our premise to a Venn diagram for our conclusion. So that's the basic idea. You're looking to see what information is contained in the premise by illustrating that information using a Venn diagram. And then you're comparing that to the information communicated in the conclusion. And you're asking, does the information in the conclusion follow from the information in the premise? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna look at that first premise and we're going to construct a Venn diagram for it. So when we look at the sentence, some mammals are amphibious, the first question we have to ask ourselves is about the categories involved. So what are the categories that are involved in the sentence, some mammals are amphibious? Now, from previous sections, you will perhaps notice immediately that mammals is absolutely a category. So mammals is a category to which things um, belong. So things like lions and tigers are mammals. Um, and secondly, even though it may be a little more deceptive, amphibious is a category. And amphibious is a category, importantly, because we can turn it into things that are amphibious. And so things that are amphibious, adjectives like amphibious, give us sort of space for, uh, for making categories in which there are things to which that adjective applies. So that means that in this premise, we really need two circles because we have two categories. So we're gonna draw our Venn diagram like this. We've got two circles. And we'll label our first circle mammals. So I'm gonna put that on the left here. And we're gonna label our second circle things that are amphibious. Again, remember the premise in question is some mammals are amphibious. So the next thing we have to ask ourselves is what categorical form this is. And remember, we have four sorts of categorical forms that we can deal with. We have all SRP, all S are not P, some SRP, and some s are not p and so notice the difference then really lies in whether you have some or all and whether you have the presence of not or you don't so first we can notice we don't have the presence of not so that gets rid of the possibility of it being these two forms right because there's no not in our sentence and second we do in fact have some at the beginning of the sentence. So this is a particular, right? It's, a, it's the categorical form of a particular. So we are looking at this categorical form right here, some SRP. Now in previous sections of this tutorial, we defined this categorical form, some SRP, as meaning that there is at least one particular, there is at least one object at the intersection of the first category and the second. So where the two categories S and P overlap, there is at least one particular. We note that, right? We note that with an asterisk. 
So putting an asterisk in a place where both S and P are true tells us that there's at least one thing that's S that's also P, right? So there's at least one object that's both of these things. So in Venn diagram form, that looks just like doing this. It looks like putting an asterisk right in the middle, right? At the intersection of mammals and things that are amphibious. Because what we're saying then is there's at least one object such that it's in the mammal circle, right? Because this is the mammal circle. And it's in the things that are amphibious circle. So it's both, right? It's both a mammal and a thing that is amphibious. All right, so now that we've determined our first Venn diagram, we wanna go ahead and look at our second Venn diagram. So let's read our conclusion again. Our conclusion is, therefore, some amb amphibious things are mammals. So first question again is what are our categories? Luckily for us, our categories here are the same as they were in the previous sentence. Now you might notice really quickly, there is a difference between amphibious and amphibious things. But remember, we translated amphibious in this case to things that are amphibious. So amphibious things, things that are amphibious and the adjective itself, those are all gonna get fleshed out in the same way in categorical logic. There's no major difference between those. And mammals and mammals are precisely identical, right? So that means we now know that our second Venn diagram is going to have exactly the same categories as the first one. We're going to have mammals and we're gonna have things that are amphibious. Now, what we have to look at next is our form. Right, so our form in this case doesn't have a not in it, so we know that it's not one of those ones that involves a negation, and it very clearly has a sum. But notice the difference here is that while the first sentence was of a sum SRP form, right, where mammals is the S and amphibious is the P, if we keep that combination of variables and noun and adjective phrases. So where we shorten mammals to S and we shorten amphibious to P, then the conclusion says that some P, right? Because amphibious comes first, some P are S. So really what we're asking is if we flip the subject and the object, is the argument valid, right? So is the argument valid when the S and P or the subject and uh, predicate get flipped, right? So is this argument valid? Some SRP, therefore, with our three little dots, some P R S. That's, that's really the question we have in mind here, right? But remember, it's really important to remember that my Venn diagrams don't track that flipping of subject and object. All I care about in the Venn diagram is that I have two categories. It doesn't matter whether one circle is on the left or the right, right? So we want to keep our circles intact. We want to keep mammals on the left and amphibious things on the right, because that helps us effectively compare the two Venn diagrams that we're interested in. So just because the subject and predicate flipped from premise to conclusion, doesn't mean that we should change the order of our circles and our Venn diagram. Okay, so that's really, that's really important. So now let's think about what the conclusion is asking us to do in terms of our Venn diagram. So since this is of the form some PRS, right? So some amphibious things are mammals. We know that this is an asterisk type Venn diagram. So there's gonna be an asterisk that we need to put. And further, we know that what some statements are really saying is there is at least one thing denoted by an asterisk that's both the first category and the second category. So in this case, there's at least one thing notated by an asterisk that is an amphibious thing and is a mammal, right? So there's something at the intersection. So in other words, our asterisk needs to go right here because right here is both within the circle of amphibious things and it's within the circle of mammals. 
And that's exactly what we're saying in the conclusion is that some amphibious things, at least one potentially more amphibious things are mammals. Okay. So the last thing we do when we're asking if this argument is valid. So we want to know if this argument up here, right here, this argument, which is of this form, remember, we want to know, is it valid? And the way we figure out if it's valid is we compare the premise Venn, which is this one right here, the premise Venn diagram, to the conclusion Venn diagram. And we ask ourselves the following question. We ask ourselves, is there any additional information in the conclusion Venn diagram that isn't in the premise Venn diagram? So another way of putting this is, is all of the information in the conclusion Venn diagram contained within the premise Venn diagram? And in this case, the answer is yes. And the answer is very clearly and obviously yes, because these Venn diagrams are identical, right? We've created two identical Venn diagrams right here, right? They're identical. They both contain two circles of the exact same categories with an asterisk right in the middle. And so since they have the same categories, same overlap, same asterisk in that overlap, right, right in here, that means there's no additional information in the conclusion that's not in the premise. So everything we know or have learned in the premise can be extrapolated, or I'm sorry, everything we know or have learned from the conclusion can be extrapolated from the premise, right? It all comes from the premise. There's no additional information here that we didn't get from here. So that means, yes, this argument is valid, right? So this argument is valid. All right, thank you for listening to this example and proceed on to the second example of an invalid argument.